Hi everyone, I'm Dan Freed, creator of Biochemistry Literacy for Kids. In this video, we're going to learn how to download and use a free molecular modeling software called Pymol. It's going to allow us to download and view beautiful structures from the Protein Data Bank and other sources and answer all kinds of amazing questions about biology. So let's get started. The first thing that you're going to do is search Google for Pymol Educational. It's very important that you go to this part of the Pymol website because it allows us to download the free builds of Pymol. You are not going to pay for Pymol because it is free for educational use. You're then going to fill out this form according to what you are, if you're a student or teacher. And when you hit continue, you'll be getting an email with the download information for the software. You'll then be directed to this page, which has the licensing information. Just go ahead and fill in the code at the bottom and hit agree. And now you'll get your confirmation telling you that the download information has been emailed to your email address. In this email, you will see at the bottom the download URL and your username and password so that you can download Pymol. Once you enter your username and password, you'll be given access to the download page. Here you're gonna see all the different builds which are available. There's some newer builds, uh, Pymol 2.0, which was released in 2017, and there are also older builds. The older builds work just as well as the new one, but the new one actually uh, looks a little bit fancier and has some shortcuts in your molecular rendering. So I would recommend to download one of the newer builds. One caveat here is that if your computer does not have a Windows, Mac, or Linux operating system, Pymol will not open. So you can download this, but it will not work on a machine, for example, a Chromebook. This could be a problem for you. You'll need to install Linux on your Chromebook in order to download Pymol. So I suggest using a computer that has either Windows or a Mac operating system already installed. Now if you have a Mac, one thing that you're going to probably have to deal with is your system preferences. Because you're going to be downloading software from the internet, you may have security settings which will prevent you or notify you that something is happening when you're doing this. So open your system preferences, select pr uh, security and privacy, and you're going to have to unlock this little icon so that you can make changes, meaning that you can download an application from the web. So you're going to have to enter your computer's username and password in order to get this done. If you have a computer from a university or a school, you may have to get permission from the institution to do this. But if you have your home laptop, this should work just fine. Once you've entered that information, you'll notice that your icon is unlocked. Now you are able to download software from the web. Just be sure to lock it later, or most computers will actually lock it back up automatically. So if we want to download the file, let's go to the installers link. And since I have a Mac, I'm going to click on the Mac icon and it's going to download the disk image. I'm going to keep this and I'm going to click on my download and then the download process will begin. And this is how your computer will download any other software. You're just going to wait and go through a series of prompts to get the software onto your computer. Now we're going to move the application to our applications folder. After a few minutes, you should be able to see the Pymol application in your applications folder. And I'm going to find it right here. Uh, once you click on it, it will open. You can also add it to your dock so that you can load things later. And once it opens, we will be able to begin downloading structures from the Protein Data Bank and other databases so that we can get on with our activity. If you see this screen, you have successfully downloaded Pymol. There's nothing on it. The reason there's nothing on it is because we haven't actually loaded anything into the software yet. It's kind of like when you open up a Word document, it's a blank white screen. We have yet to write anything. But before we get started, keep in mind that this is a free trial of Pymol. You will never be charged for it. It will always work on your computer. So uh, sometimes people get uh, messages saying that the license will expire in a certain amount of time. That's, uh, I think, just to encourage people to purchase the license if they're part of an academic institution. But please uh, don't worry that if you are an, an individual user, you are allowed to use Pymol and it will work indefinitely on your computer. There are several ways to load structures in Pymol, but one way, and possibly the easiest way, is to visit my website, Biochemistry Literacy for Kids. When you go to the About section and then click on the Languages drop-down menu, 
you will find the page where I have uploaded many of the free translations of my first lesson. This page is mainly featuring the different languages, but you can also go to the English translation. And this brings you to the first lesson of the curriculum. There's a lot of information here. There's a PowerPoint window, which actually gives you the whole PowerPoint that a teacher could use in, uh, in, in instructing this lesson. But if you scroll down, you'll also see a video link, which is basically me talking and giving the first lesson. But if you scroll down more, you're going to find the lesson attachments. And this is what we're interested for our lesson right now. We're interested in these files right here, which are PyMall files. They're .pse files, and these can be automatically opened on PyMall. The coolest structure to look at on this list here is the hemoglobin, and we're actually using hemoglobin a lot in the first lesson. So click on the structure, retrieve it from your downloads, and the structure should automatically open in PyMall. If it doesn't automatically open in PyMall, you can also click on File, Open, and then find the structure in your downloads folder. Now there's quite a lot to look at in this professional molecular modeling software, and this program does a lot. But what we're going to work on right now are just the basics. We're going to work on how to operate the mouse or your trackpad, and we're going to do some basic manipulations of the structure so that we can start to see how PyMall can create really cool structures that emphasize certain things about the structure that could be important to biology. So first, let's work on the mouse commands. The mouse commands that are important are the left mouse click. So if you click on the left mouse key, or click and hold on your trackpad, you can tumble the molecule. And this is actually the camera moving around the structure. So that's your left mouse button. Just click and hold and click and hold and you'll find uh, what it does. You can also use the right mouse button to zoom in and out. So between zooming in and out and with your, with your right mouse button and then moving around with the middle mouse button, the middle mouse button pans the molecule. So if you have a trackpad, you'll need to hold down for a Mac anyway on option and then click and hold and you can move back and forth. I really do recommend using a three button mouse for this. You'll find it's much more comfortable if you have a cheap three button mouse. I really recommend that you do that rather than dealing with the trackpad because it's a little bit more complicated. But uh, anyway, the, the, the keys that are important, left mouse button, right mouse button, and then click and hold the middle mouse button, and that gives us the panning back and forth. And this allows you to use to, to view any part of the structure that you want. Another interesting thing to do is to use the scroll wheel, which is off in the middle mouse button. This allows us to change the field of view to kind of give us sort of an x-ray vision into the molecule. Let's talk a little bit more about what we're actually looking at now that we've learned how to use the mouse. We are looking at hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is, of course, the molecule in our red blood cells that carries oxygen around. It's a very, very large protein. It contains almost 10,000 atoms. And if you look at the video that is attached to this lesson, you'll learn about the color coding. But the gray atoms are carbon, the white ones are hydrogen, the red ones are oxygen, the blue ones are nitrogen, and you'll also notice a few yellow atoms, which are sulfurs. So some of the amino acids, which can, uh, comprise the structure, also have sulfurs in them. There's one very important atom, which I didn't name yet, which is iron. Everyone knows that iron is in our blood. So the iron in our blood is actually the iron that's held right here in the heme of the molecule. I'm going to teach you one other trick on how to manipulate the structure. If you left click the corner of your screen or the side of the screen, you can kind of spin the molecule around. That's also something that's pretty useful uh, to do. If you happen to get your molecule lost, and this happens to beginners all the time, if this happens to you, if the molecule has gone off, off view and now you are clicking around, clicking, clicking, you cannot find your molecule, what you want to do is go to the top right and click zoom. And that will bring our molecule right back to us. That can be a very, very useful button to know about. Something else important to know about is that PyMall does not have an undo button. So if you are editing the molecule and you do a kind of critical mistake, you will not be able to get back to where you were very easily. So I also recommend saving your session often. Go up to here, uh, File, Save Session As, and keep a, a saved version of whatever you're working on at all times so that you don't have to repeat what you've done already. Now I have many videos on my YouTube channel 
that explain more about hemoglobin and more about how to use pimol. But in this video, I wanted to just give you a few of the basic commands to give you a feel of what pimol can do. Pimol can change the look of the structure to sort of emphasize different features of the structure. So one thing about large molecules is that the surface and the topology of the molecule surface is very important to know about. So that's what I'm going to do for this structure. I'm going to first render the surface of the molecule. To do that, we're going to go down to where it says selecting state and toggle, which means clicking through a bunch of options, to find where it says molecules. Now, if you're clicking this and it's not working, it's because you're in the wrong mouse editing mode. It's very easy to accidentally click to that mouse editing mode, and now you'll notice you can't change anything. So make sure you're in the three button viewing and not the three button editing. The three button editing does something else and there's videos that I explain what that is in that video. So let's go to the three button viewing and make sure you're on molecules. I'm now going to click the four molecules which make up hemoglobin. I am now going to go over to where it says selection and I'm going to show, which is S, show for S, the surface. And when I click on this surface, it's going to take a second, but the surface is going to pop out at us. And now we see the beautiful ghost-like surface of this molecule. I've already changed some of the settings so that the surface is transparent, but so now we can see both the inside and the outside of the structure. It's really beautiful to see that. And now we can sort of see the uh, electron clouds, what's called the van der Waals radius of all the atoms, and we can sort of see the, the overall structural topology of the hemoglobin. One interesting thing that can be useful with this kind of rendering is to see where the heme binds. The heme is the part of the molecule that contains that iron, and in that iron is an oxygen. And if you watch some of the other videos, you'll see this molecule right here, this O2, with the double bond between the two oxygens. That's the oxygen that we are actually breathing in and carrying through our blood, and you can see that it's connected to that orange iron. And that orange iron is in turn held in place by four nitrogens. So there's really a lot of stuff to look at here, some of which really is more appropriate if you uh, uh, watch the lesson and study the, study the lesson that I've created. But that is the kind of beautiful and very in-depth biological study that we can do with these structures. One other thing that we notice is that there are actually four hemes. One, two, three, four. So that means that this molecule carries four oxygen molecules. The entire purpose of this molecule is nothing more than to carry four oxygen molecules in our blood. I think that's pretty amazing. Now back on the website, if you'd like to check out some of the other structures which I have here, we can look at diamond. Diamond is a form of carbon, and we notice the striking amount of bonds between all the atoms. That's what gives diamond its extremely tough structure. We can also look at graphite, which is another form of carbon. Graphite is a more layered form of carbon, and it contains these uh, hexagon-shaped arrangements, these rings. And um, basically the way graphite works is that these layers get rubbed off onto your paper as you write with a pencil. And we also have the most fun form of carbon, which is the fullerene, also known as Buckminster fullerene. This is a molecular soccer ball. It's made of 60 carbons arranged in the exact geometry as a soccer ball. Now, if you're interested in doing more with Pymol, you want to check out the Protein Data Bank, or the PDB. This is the online repository for the world's structural information about biomolecules. Currently, you can see here, there are 170,000 structures available. So literally anything you want to know about is on this website. They have this really cool feature called the Molecule of the Month, which gives sort of a general audience geared article about different issues in biology. And you can click on the links here to download the structures that are associated with the article. But what I want to show you is how you can search for literally any molecule you want. Let's say you're interested in doing some COVID research. You can type in COVID to the search bar here, and you will get all the structures in the database that have anything to do with COVID. This is a kind of cool structure without getting into too much about what it is. It is a DNA element that is part of COVID, and they're actually doing some research here trying to figure out how to stop the replication. If you wanted to view this structure, simply click on Download Files, 
PDB format. And now the structure should open right up in PyMol. Now this is a very unusual DNA structure. This is part of the COVID uh, DNA uh, genome, but we have this weird association between do two DNA molecules. And it's really quite strange, but it's uh, kind of interesting as well. We can modify this kind of structure by toggling and finding our molecule selection. And if we click anywhere on that, we we'll highlight just one molecule of this DNA complex. We can t highlight over here, highlight the other one. And now we can modify that. We can change things about what this is uh, looking like. For example, maybe we want to show the spheres. So click on the S and then click on spheres. And now we see all the atoms which are making up this molecule. We may also want to change the color to the familiar colors that uh, students are used to. That are the gray carbon. So how to find it is uh, the way I'm showing you right here. And now we have the nice gray carbons that we're used to. Now without getting into the details here, this structure is actually a very unique structure. This structure was captured in an experiment that gives us actually many structures. It's not just one structure. There's many structures in this file. And I'm going to show you something that's quite shocking. I'm going to hit the space bar and we're going to cycle through all the structures that are in this file. Now the molecule looks very wiggly here. What this means is that we have multiple structures and because some of the parts of the molecule are remaining the same in those structures and other parts of the molecule look like they're changing a lot more, this gives us an idea of the flexibility of the DNA molecule. So for example, over on the right side here, you can see that this part of the DNA is very rigid. That means that all the structures that were captured were very similar. But the other side of the molecule is way more wiggly. So that means that many different kinds of structures were captured. So that part of the molecule has much more flexibility. And that kind of concept can be very, very important in biology. Anyway, I thought that this would be an interesting tutorial to give you the basics of how to use PyMol. There are many more videos with more depth to them on my YouTube channel and elsewhere. And if you're interested in learning about biochemistry, I hope you do. And if you're interested in the biochemistry literacy curriculum, all these concepts will become much clearer because you will actually be learning about what's going on with bonding and the structures and what these molecules actually do. So thank you so much for watching this tutorial.